Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a video to do for you talking about big idea designs. So uh, I reached out to them because I kept hearing about them through a few different places. Uh, I kept seeing like commercials for them kind of from, um, what the hell's his name? <laughs> uh, Taylor Martin. Oh, the guy from Best Damn EDC. And then I just through the grapevine had heard that this TPT slide was such a cool product and everybody was raving about it to me when I got this in, the Arrow Crafted, oh shit, I haven't put it back together yet, I couldn't figure it out, um, the side slip and um, people mentioned that this was like the best little utility knife thing you could get, so... I was very intrigued and I wanted to check one out and uh, I reached out to Big Idea Designs. They asked me what I was interested in and they sent me a few things. So I said I wasn't looking for free stuff. I'll send it back, give it away, whatever. Um, we haven't sort of figured that part out yet, but uh, I'm sure we will. So I just want to go over what they sent, talk about it a little bit, and then uh, yeah. So I did sign up for their affiliate program uh, after I got this one. This is the first product I got and I got it like um, a few days before these came and, um, I really like this. Definitely a solidly built cool product. And, um, so I signed up for their affiliate program. If you guys want to check it out, you can go over to their website, bigideadesigns.com. There's a link down in the description. You can also just use my code. I believe it's lefty EDC. It could be lefty 10, but it's in the description. You can go look or try those two codes and you'll get 10% off uh your order I, I don't know if it works all the time or if it'll just work for your first order so just get whatever you want but um you can get 10 percent off with uh lefty edc or lefty 10 so um yeah so let's talk about this first and we'll kind of go down the line all right we'll do the pens last so this is the uh bit bar and i kind of went over this in an unboxing of this so i don't want to go crazy here but basically it's a piece of titanium this one's black in this case it's got some kind of coating <laughs> DLC or something. And basically there are eight bits in here. You can interchange them with any bits you have. So if you just want a full like knife maintenance kit, boom, you could put, you know, T, uh, T5, 6, 7, 8, 10, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever. Uh, they don't have 11 and 12. Uh, T15, T20, or you could just put the most popular ones. Like I would probably put a T6, T8, a T10, a T15 maybe a 20 and then i would do um a phillips a flathead um and maybe something else you know and that would be perfect for me and i probably will kit this out that way i do like how these are the black oxidized uh coated bits and you know what i would put in there is going to be regular but you know it's fine but basically you have this uh push bar and you just push it up you grab the bit you want out let go it drops back down and it uh is magnetic drops right into down there boom and there you go um there's something oh just a little bit of dirt on the magnet probably picked up something off of one of these but anyway and then you have it like this um and i think it's really cool comes with an extender and then you have magnetic catch right there so it drops back in they can't just fall out um and this is very magnetic right here this strip so you could actually magnetize something to it if you want, like, um, I don't have anything metal, but like the, um, like the extender, it's in the box, I don't have it, but the extender is just a steel extender, it actually fits like perfectly right here, and then you could clip it into your bag or whatever, if you carry it in your pocket, you're not going to put the extender on there, it's just a little, you know, it's going to fall right off, but it is strong enough that if you put it in a bag or something on there, it would work. Um, but yeah, it has a clip so you could pocket carry this. Um, you could clip it to a bag. You could do whatever you want, right? I think this is cool. This is something I think I might chuck or would chuck into my truck or whatever, right? Um, so I really like that. Downsides to this, I think, are it's a little, you know, it feels a little, uh, I wouldn't say jank or anything. Uh, but just the nature of having a spring-loaded thing in here, it can be a little bit, you know loud and things moving around and when you're trying to do something you can click it a lot and then the other downside is it's not round so when you're 
trying to screw something or whatever. It's, you know, it's obviously more annoying to spin something like this in your hand. It's going to be harder to get good control than it would be if you had a driver in your hand that's rounded. You know, let's say this is a, a bit driver. You can just spin this in your hand, right? It's a little easier. Um, those are the two downsides, but I think it's a really cool product. Um, definitely something worth trying if you're in need of having bits. So like I carry a, um, Vero engineering fulcrum every day. Right. And, uh, Vero put my logo on the back here, which is awesome. Um, but the thing I would say is this, you can only carry two bits. So this is cool because you have eight. So if you're someone who needs more than two, this is a good way to go. Especially, I think this is important if you carry a bag or something. This is going to be a lot more to carry than this. You know what I mean? This is nice and com it's pretty compact and small and light. And it clips real easy. It has a little pry thing. So it comes in handy occasionally with that. And then you have the bits you need. I carry a T8 and a Phillips. And then this is basically my flathead. So, you know, if I need a clip screw or something or a pivot tighten, 90% of the time it's a T8. Um, and then I have this for like kids toys and stuff. I'm constantly replacing batteries or putting something together or whatever. Right. Um, but honestly, if I had a bag or something, I carried this or a pouch, like a lot of guys do, this is perfect because I would just switch out, uh, maybe this flathead and, you know, or this flathead here and this guy, you know, um, uh, is this a, Oh, it's an Allen. Perfect. That's actually really good to have in there. Um, that would work on a lot of Ikea furniture, I bet. That's why they did that. Um, and cribs and shit. Cribs are a nightmare to take apart or lower and raise and shit if you have kids. Uh, but anyway, I would just take some of these duplicates out and I would put the torques I need in. And then I'd have everything I needed. Like, I do come across times where I'm like, shit, I needed a T6. Or shit, I needed a T10, right? Not everything's a T8. Uh, and then sometimes having the actual flathead is better because this doesn't always work. Or I got to, you know, and then I'm scratching the screw because I'm constantly stripping it out. So I love this. And I don't think I would ever replace this with this in the pocket. But in terms of uh, actually having a cool portable bit driver type thing, I think this is better because it has more function. You know, this is just as awkward to spin in your hand. You know what I mean? Um, so if you carry a bag, a purse, a purse, something like that, a pouch, I really, I think can highly recommend the bit bar. They do make one called the bit bar inline, which is about half the size. And the, and the bits I think drop through the top, kind of like when you're a kid and you had those crayons or markers where you would push them through and then like pick a color and then you shove it back the other one in the end and you push that forward and it pop the next one out. It's kind of like that. I think it's called the bit bar inline. <laughs> A little bit smaller, more pocketable, I guess. And I'm guessing it holds less bits, though. It's probably your trade-off. So, excuse me. Let me uh, open this LaCroix. Or, sorry, Spindrift Raspberry Lime. So, bit bar is awesome, guys. Next up, we'll talk about the TPT slide. I have one big negative to this. Um... And I'll get to that. So, this is an interesting product. So, it's titanium. That's kind of the claim. Not the claim to fame. But the thing here with them is a lot of their stuff is titanium. One of these is brass. But it could be titanium depending on what you wanted. So, this comes with a laner. It came out of the box just like this. The cool thing with basically everything I'm showing you today. It comes with spare parts which is cool. It has like extra screws. Uh, this came with an extra uh, insert that was black. Um... I think that's it for this guy. And then the pens come with some cool stuff. Uh, but I like the lanyard because in hand, it really actually helps. Uh, when you're trying to grip to slide, it's nice to have that little bit of something to tug on. And even though it's not like a solid piece of something you're holding on, you can kind of grip it with your pinky. And if you pull back, you're kind of like t putting tension on this. And it almost feels like you have something you're gripping. And then you can slide forward. It's hard to explain, but it makes sense. Um, this is a little bit gimmicky in a way. It has a, a pry bar back here. They call it a pry bar slash sort of flathead. They call this something flathead or uh, elongated flathead or something, some nonsense like that. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess it could be useful. 
Um, you have a, a bit for or a spot for a quarter inch bit. So you could take this and it's probably going to fall right through. That's my problem with this type of stuff on a pry bar is it always kind of falls right through. But this does have a little bit of, you know, it doesn't just drop right through. Well, so anyway, what you would do is kind of take your finger like this and you'd put it behind it, right? And this is why it's not great. But in a pinch, this is good, right? You hold it like this. Sorry, I'm not doing this on purpose. And then you would take whatever you're trying to unscrew, like, let's say, is there a T8 on here? No. But you would just press it against whatever you're trying to unscrew. Um, is there a knife here? Let's just do this. So, so wait, is this T10? It's T15. T15, hold on. Do they even have a T8 in here? Oh, they don't have a T8 in here. That's weird. Um, and it's not made for knives, but anyway, you get the point. You put it in there, you press against it on this end, and then you put it there and then you, you know, crank on it or whatever. It's not going to be the greatest thing in the world, but it's going to work right in a pinch if you needed it to. Um, it also has a clip that can be removed, um, which is cool. And then one thing I thought was interesting at first, I was like, eh, gimmicky, but you know what? I kind of like it from this screw to that screw is one inch. And from this screw to that screw is two inches. I think that's kind of cool to have that. Um, just a little measurement system there if you ever needed it. Um, I think that's pretty unique. This is a bottle opener right here. So you can use that to pop a cap off if you needed to. Um, and then this, it comes with this in it. And they call this a camping fork, which, you know, okay. But that to me is the, the, the gripe I have with this. Is it doesn't come with a damn razor blade. It's supposed to be a utility knife, pocket utility knife, and it doesn't even have one. Um, it's not sharp, you know what I mean? And I think that's the same with this, to be honest. I'm pretty sure this isn't sharp. Oh, wait. Yeah, see, I don't know. It just doesn't, doesn't feel super sharp. I couldn't even cut paper with it earlier. Um, so I don't know if they're like some kind of legal rule here where you just can't ship stuff like this with a um, blade in it. That's probably what it is, to be honest. So it's not really a gripe. It's just kind of annoying that you can't, um, out of the box, use it. Like, yes, it, it's sharp on this corner enough that if you had a package, you could slice right into that package, no problem. You could just pop the corner out, cut your package open, and you're good to go. But I want a real razor blade on here, right? That's what I want. Um, so that's my gripe, but whatever. It comes with a tuning fork, sorry, camping fork. So the way to swap um, blades is you kind of, it, it seems a little odd, right? It seems weird, but it works pretty well. You twist this. So you push down on this, you push it to the forward position, and then you twist this and push it forward some more, right? Um, let's see if I can get it now. I was doing it earlier. I think I always just do it too far. And then, yep, see? Um, so then it comes right out. No, this side's not sharp or anything. It doesn't make a difference. It just, I don't know, looks more like a razor blade on this side. But then it's kind of stuck like this now, right? A little bit cracked. So what you do is you pop it back in to put the new one in. You just slide it in like this. And then pull back. Oh, yeah. And then it kind of, you pull back and it shuts itself. And then you're in and you're good to go has two positions and you have to press down to move it forward. So I can't just push it, right? I have to push down, forward. It reaches this spot again. It's locked, so I can't push forward. I can pull back. I don't know. I'm pushing down, I think. Yeah. It's easier to push down and back, I guess. But anyway, you can't push forward on accident. You have to push down, forward. And then it. this is the last position right there. Yeah, there's a little bit of movement. It's a utility knife. They all are the same, basically. And then to go back, you just slide back. So I think it's cool. It's got that nice little uh, safety feature. Now, what I thought was interesting was in the pocket, if you carried this right-handed in the pocket, you would have the blade edge down against the inside of your pants. So if you reached into your pants and this was open, you'd have an exposed blade. Now, I wonder if they did that because... Um, the button is now against your leg. 
against the side of your seam, not, you know what I mean? So you can't accidentally depress this because it's stuck against your leg, right? You can't just like accidentally push it down. Where if it was in your left front pocket, yes, the blade is now against here, the seam of your jeans. So it's safer that way, in my opinion. But I think it's easier to kind of like bump it. So I think that's why they did it because you could easily just like, you like reach into your pocket and push the blade forward on accident. All you have to do is put a little pressure down and slide and it kind of just goes. So if I'm like reaching in and I'm like this, now I have an exposed blade in my pocket, right? Um, so I don't know if that's why they did it. In my opinion, the way to probably do this is just take the clip off. And I think you just remove these torque screws and then you pull the clip out or whatever. It falls out or whatever. Um, it probably has a notch in there. You just take it out and then um, you just don't use a clip. I mean, you just pocket drop this guy, put it in a bag, do whatever, right? I think that's why it has a lanyard. I think it'd be really hard to accidentally engage this thing just kind of like in your pocket down at the bottom, right? Um, so, yeah, that's the TPT slide. I think it's really cool. I think some of the little things are, are gimmicky, but I really like um, the overall design and everything. I want to go get some razor blades. I don't know why I didn't have any. I probably do, like in my tool thing downstairs. I just haven't looked through it um but i do wish it came with some like why is it like illegal like couldn't they just put some razor blades in a plastic thing that came with it at least so i could replace it and then the other downside i have is it seems a little bit iffy to be grabbing a live blade like that to twist it to, to you know to remove it and it's not the easiest thing in the world to get down you know like here i'm not doing it again i think you gotta push forward like while you're doing it there you know, and if I'm grabbing a live blade doing that, it's a little bit more, you know, finicky for me um, to do it that way, in my opinion. Why can't I get it in now? What's going on? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think I need to twist it open. Yeah, there we go. See what I mean? Like, it just seems, I don't know, a little bit iffy. Uh, I do wonder if you took this off. Could you just put the blade in that way then? Like, let's take a look. Is it a T? Yeah, it looks like a T6. So they definitely are knife people, right? While we're at it, we can um, take the uh, clip off. Because I definitely don't want the clip, I think. Although, you know what, I might carry it in my back left pocket, like a righty, you know, that's how I carry righty knives, but I don't know if I would do that. So I was trying to hope not to take every, there we go. Okay, so the button fell off, great. Just don't want this. All right, so there's your track, I guess, right? Got some oil on it, probably should have left it there. Here's your clip, so I'm guessing you can just push it out, up and out or something. It's got like a bar around it or something. I don't know what that is. What is that? There's like this. Do you just push it really hard? I think that's all you gotta do. Hmm. Do you wedge it like Huh, let's check the box. So here, it does come with extra screws. I wanted to show you that. And then it comes with a sheath, actually, which is pretty cool. Let me zoom out. Oh, my God, I hit the thing. All right. 
Um, stickers and a thing. Here's a sheath, which is pretty cool that it comes with a sheath, right? You can slide in there. And here's that extra blade that, again, it's just black, but it's not sharp. Again, it's got poke, but it's not sharp. Um, uh -oh. Did I lose the insert? Oh, here. Okay. Just want to see, because... Tells you how to... See, safe carry insert. That's what it comes with. Finger safe dull edge package opener. Stainless steel camping fork. To prevent injury, always use extreme caution when handling any inserts. So this is telling you how you uh, replace the insert. We did that. Um, I swear it said removable clip. Maybe I'm crazy. Removable pocket clip. Hmm. So, I'm not seeing where it tells you how to remove the pocket clip, though, sadly. Let me put all this back. Like, I don't see enough room there for me to push that little thing up. I don't think it would get out of the way enough, would it? And it's titanium, so I don't know why it would... I don't know what you could get in there to push that up anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know how you would. I don't want to just hammer it out either. I don't know how that would help. I guess it's not a huge deal if the clip is in there, but it just seems silly that it is, you know? Um... I don't think I have anything with like a needle point, you know. I don't want to use a slip joint. This isn't sharp, but like I don't know. There, I pushed it up. Okay, let's see. Maybe it does go all the way. Jesus, see, this is what I'm worried about. It's not even locked because I. Haven't fixed this one yet. I think I got it. Yep. Well, I started getting it. Look at that, it wants to come out. God damn it, wish I could fix this. It's working its way out, that's for sure. God damn it, so close. Am I crazy? Has that moved at all? I don't know. Just sheared the tip up. <clears throat> I have a brass pick on. Something I can use, like I don't. 
Ah, oh, god damn it. No, I can flip it over. I wish I could get this one back together so then I could just use it, but I still haven't figured this one out. It's gotta like click in. got to get far enough so that slot can pop in, but I don't quite understand how you're going to do that without flexing the shit out of it. And even then, how would this hook in? I don't know. Oh, you do it this way, probably. No, that wouldn't work. And it, it's not like you can get it to... Yeah, see, I don't get it. Anyway. Why is it so damn difficult, though? Why didn't they just use a screw? Like, I'm not trying to be a dick, but Jesus. Oh, yeah, it's definitely moving. Oh, you idiot. You push it forward, fucking dumbass. I'm such an idiot. I really am. Then it'll just come out. I don't know if this is worth... Will it even stay in there if I put it in? I don't think that'll just stay in there, right? No, I'm going to keep that with the clip. So, All right, so question was could you put this in right so this is the top right like this is how it goes all right so you could probably just take it apart and then put the uh blade in i guess that was what I was wondering. I think it rides on this side. Yeah, it rides on this side, see? <sighs> and then I gotta get the button back on. Jesus, I didn't realize this would be such a pain in the arse, but that was my fault. But it is cool to see the inside. So let's put the blade, oh, it's kind of stuck in there. All right, cool. Might be easier than I thought. Famous last words. Either way, I could put it back together and then slide the thing in, right? Probably what I should do, honestly. But I think the answer is yes, you could do it this way if you wanted to. But let's do this. It doesn't have any, like, anything holding it together other than the screws. It seems weird. Guess we'll find out. Unless I did it backwards or something. That's the problem. I'm not tightening anything yet because I have no idea if this is right. Let's 
Seems like it though. Seems like I got it. Yeah, all right, so hold on. Gentle. You gotta remember it's T6, so don't go crazy. All right, I'm gonna take our camping fork here. I don't think that's right. There we go. All right, so now pop it back in. Boom, good to go. Double check the screws. I don't know if having it where I did made a difference. Nope, nope, nope. All right, so I think note to self here, guys, is don't even mess with the um, clip. I don't think it's worth it, but if you want to know how to do it, that's how you do it. You're, you're, you want to be smarter than me, basically. You want to push the clip forward. <laughs> pop that pin out and then take it out. I was being dumb and just trying to pop the pin out, uh, um, which is funny. They sent me this. I said I'd send it back. I'm like messing the thing up. I'm not trying to. I just was trying to get that out. So, But if I have to, I'll just pay for it. It's not a big deal. I do like it. So, so it works out. Personally, I probably would have went with a plain tie one, but... You know, it doesn't matter. All right, so that's the TPT slide. Sorry for the long thing there, guys. Um, I just, you know me, I want to get it right. So into the pens. So let's talk about these pens. I'm going to fix that too at some point. So this is their um, Volt Action Pen. And this actually comes with a brass uh, knob, but it came with an extra Timascus one in the parts bin, which I think is just how it comes. I don't think that was because it's me or anything. Um, these shipped from Amazon Fulfillment, so I doubt it. But these are really cool, um, and I'll pull the tie click out as well. Basically, the claim to fame on these is they take basically any refill. So the way they do that is this system down here. So if you look at it, it's a barrel. It's on top of the titanium, right? So it actually twists. So it has a way, see all those O-rings, and here's it's a piece of plastic in there that tightens down. Um, and it comes with two springs. I don't know if one's weaker than the other, but basically you take your refill, whatever refill it is, I mean, unless it's huge or something, or absolutely tiny, I guess it might not fit, but... Pretty sure all refills will fit. So you slide it in. Make sure you put it on this way. Because if you put it on this way, the uh, spring can slide up the refill. You don't want that. You want it to catch right here, right? That might be another reason they have different um, springs. So then you take this, pop it in, and you start tightening it down, right? And right here is about as long as it gets, right? That's a pretty long-ass pen, right? Um... Just for reference, here is the uh, billet spin pen. All right, so it is bigger than that. And you could probably go a little bit bigger. You wouldn't want this um, white thing showing, right? So that's probably as big as it gets right there. There you go, there's the billet spin pen, cam pen. Then we have the Grimsmo Saga pen, my favorite pen right here. You see it's pretty much a lot bigger than that. So, uh, But then what you do is whatever refill you have, you just start tightening it down until it's tight. That's all you got to do. Tight, tight, tight. Boom. Now, you can adjust it if you like. See, so look, now I click and it's back. Click down. Right, And if you don't like having that much tip out, you could back off a little bit. And then you could just have that much tip. Still works great. If you want a little less tip, boom. You can have just the tip sticking out. I like a lot of tips. So I'm going to go ahead and just tighten it all the way down. Now, if you had a smaller refill, you just keep tightening. Right? You have a bigger refill, you back off. See, look. Can't even see the tip. Um, 
So I really, really like this system. It's the same on the bolt action. Same exact system, right? It's a different refill in there, actually. It's a Mont Blanc or something. Um, tighten it down. Goes all the way down to that, right? So you saw how long it was before. It was um, a little bit bigger than this. Look at that. Well, here it was this one, right? Now we'll put them neck and neck. Now this one's a bit bigger, right? And this was depressed when I when I did that, I think. I can't remember now, honestly. So I'll leave it like that. And this is the bolt action all the way. That's pretty cool, right? Here's the Grimsmo. It's bigger than both of them. So I think it's a really neat concept. Um, it does have a couple drawbacks. So I'll give you those real quick. Drawback number one is aesthetic. Um, you can see it has that extra large sort of thing on it. You know, the gap here. And it's just fatter down here than up here. It looks a little weird. So aesthetically, you take a little bit of a hit, right? Um, and then the other uh, negative is the action, so to speak, is not very tactile. So on the bolt action here, it's pretty good. And you can actually, like I said, it comes with different springs. The other one, if you put it in, it makes it super stiff. Now, this is all going to depend on the refill you put in, right? And you can go on their website to see a whole list of their refills, bigideadesigns.com. But um, it's still satisfying. And this one's more so than the clicky. It's still satisfying. But it's kind of a weaker pull on this one. And then on the um, other spring, it's a little too strong, right? So they have two springs, but it, you know, it's going to be different with each refill. So some might feel better than others, I guess, right? Uh, but it's still satisfying. It's still really cool. Um, it comes with this cool Timascus freaking pin or uh, lever on it. I think that's a, just a nice touch. Um, you get a good amount of tip sticking out. It's just the way I like it. Um, here you can use, I believe, a T8, and then you can remove the clip. Um, and then you have the clicker here, which is just not satisfying at all. Right? And that's your trade-off for having that kind of whole fits everything type thing. You're just going to lose certain things. You can't dial it for one thing because it it fits a bunch of different things. So just to show you the other, the clicky pen that's kind of like the go-to for tactile feel is the uh, Parker Jotter. Right, just has that sort of ASMR type deal to it, whatever you want to call it. Um, so those are the two drawbacks, but the plus side is obviously you can fit so many different refills. I love that. That's so cool. Now, again, for most of us, we have a preference. I prefer Parker Quink Fill ballpoint refills. I'm left-handed. I don't want to draw all over myself, right? So, you know, does do you need a one-size-fits-all? You know, um, basically it does suck when you find a pen you really like the looks of and you're like, damn, it doesn't fit my refill, right? That sucks. But at the same time, you're kind of making this look less aesthetically appealing to make it fit them all. It's kind of a balance. But I do think it looks cool, especially this one. I love the raw tie. This is definitely one I would buy myself and I probably will. Um... And the plus side to this being fatter down here is it's super comfortable. So, you know, you get a really strong grip down here because it's wider, right? I name is. I my name is. Um, I write like a, a five-year-old, but um, it's very comfortable to write with, you know, because of that little bit of thickness down there it makes it very comfortable. So it's a plus and minus having that thing down there, right? And I like how it's thicker down here and then thinner back here. So you don't have this thick barrel all the way up. Like to me, the tactile pens, the non-slim ones are just too wide. They're just too thick. And this is cool to have that for the grip, but not all the way up, right? 
Um, and I think that's cool. One other negative on the clicky is sometimes, as you've been seeing probably, it doesn't click. <laughs> sometimes you got to double it, you know, uh, and then it'll come up. Um, this one, it comes with a cool tool, aluminum tool that you can twist this top off with, and then you can take the clip off if you want and tighten it back down. But you do end up having a little kind of slot that you see. So it's not the best. Uh, one other thing I don't understand is why this says TI on it. Now I get it. This is all titanium. Got it. The TPT slide, titanium, the bit bar, titanium. This is brass. So the clip is titanium. So I wonder if that's why they're just saying it's a tie clip just odd to have tie on there it's kind of like their 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 kind of like their logo but it's big idea design so i might be missing something but i thought that was odd that this said tie and it's only the clip that's tie it's not like it says brass right here or whatever the code for brass is um another thing i want to note is the weight fantastic this titanium one is very very lightweight i mean it's like in the realm of like the saga weight it's really really good okay the brass is surprisingly light i was worried when i first saw i was like damn brass it's gonna be heavy right because i didn't pick what i got like color wise or whatever so i get it and i'm like ah, it's gonna be too heavy that's why i don't like brass i don't particularly love the colors and stuff either of brass and i do like copper i think i got myself with a splinter on that razor um but I do love the weight on this. It's not too weighty. And I think that's because of what they have going on in here being plastic, right? This is all plastic. You have a, a very lightweight refill, and then you have a very milled out brass uh, barrel, right? Or cylinder. So I think it just all kind of goes into a very lightweight package, which I think is really cool. So all in all, these products are awesome. Uh, Big Idea Designs is really doing intriguing, unique, in, in ingenuitive uh, things. And I think that that is the cool thing about their company. Um, you know, does one size fit all really? Is that my thing? Not really, but it works. These work. They write really well. They work really well. They, you know, it just doesn't have the most satisfying clicky. You know, geez, Kev. Okay, this works really well. Is it a little bit gimmicky? Yeah, but I think once I get a razor blade in there, it's going to be awesome, right? Once I get what I really need in there, and there must be a legal reason for not having it. You know what I mean? There just has to be. Um, it looks cool. It feels really good. The lanyard is such a really cool touch. It really is. And then you have a little bit of a flathead back here for stuff. I like that. I like that little touch, the extra... Um, having the measurements here, um, just some unique stuff. The camp fork is a little corny, but hey, whatever. They had to do something, right, um, as they throw everything around. And then the bit bar is just cool and super useful, right? So I've rambled enough here, guys. Big Idea Designs, really cool stuff. Check them out. Link is down below. You can get 10% off with Lefty EDC or Lefty 10. Sorry, I keep forgetting. It's down there in the description. Go look. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I'm really grateful that they were kind enough to send me some stuff to check out and review. And they have an affiliate link where you get 10%. I also get commission, but you get 10% off. I love that. I love when a company lets me give you a discount. It seems weird when it's just me getting commission, right? It doesn't help anybody. Uh, I mean, it does, but it, never mind. Uh, it doesn't help you guys. Uh, and these products are cool. That's that's the bottom line. The products are cool. I'm not a big bolt action guy, but this is a good one. It doesn't have a bunch of weight in the ass end. That's what I hate about bolt action pens. Seems like companies are getting really good about that, um, but it has a good weight to it. It's really good with the brass. Um, I would probably go with a raw tie like this, and I think that would be a good weight, really nice bolt action pen. And then the clicky is just money. I mean, this is probably the best clicky pen in that premium range I've tried. Usually they end up being bold actions or side clicks or whatever. This is a real clicky and it works fantastically. Um, anyway, I'm going to shut up. I love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I will catch you later.